Manufacturing is booming in some parts of the country. Take Macomb County, north of Detroit, where President Trump's trade war with China has strong supporters. As for tariffs, some workers say, bring them on. There is no one. I hope they raise it up 9,000%. I don't know. The View of the show, next time on ah! One Air. This afternoon at 1 o'clock here on WPSU 91.5. Good morning. It's 834. Support for NPR comes from this station. And from ADP, committed to transforming the way work gets done with HR, talent, time, benefits, and payroll. Informed by data and designed for people. ADP, always designing for people. And from Zoom. Zoom offers cloud video conferencing, online meetings, and a video conference room solution in one platform featuring digital video and audio with screen sharing. Account registration and more at zoom.us. It's Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Noel King in Washington, D.C. And I'm David Green in Culver City, California. Alabama officially has the most restricted anti ah! Governor Kate Ivey signed the measure into law yesterday. Doctors who perform abortions could now face up to 99 years in prison in that state. But Alabama is not an anomaly. Other states are trying to roll back access to abortion. Today, Missouri's Republican-led Senate passed a bill aimed at banning abortions at eight weeks of pregnancy. Kristen Hawkins is president of the anti-abortion organization Students for Life and joins us this morning. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. So is the strategy of the anti-abortion movement to get laws like the ones I just mentioned to the Supreme Court with a hope of overturning Roe versus Wade? I think that's what you're seeing here. Various state legislatures, they, they're kind of rushing to this at this point to be that state that is the case that the Supreme Court finally takes up to reconsider their findings in the 1973 Roe and Doe decisions. Well, I mean, this Alabama law, um, even the conservative televangelist Pat Robertson said it goes too far. He, he said that if this law gets to su- the Supreme Court, quote, this one will lose. Um, it is, does this law go too far? Um, I, well, first of all, I don't think Pat Robinson represents the pro-life generation. Um, I haven't heard He's certainly from... certainly been central to the movement over the years, though. I, I mean, haven't heard from him in a very long time. I, I think what's, what's unique about this Alabama law is that the legislators are being consistent. In the pro-life movement, you know, we acknowledge the horror of rape uh, and, and the trauma that sexual assault victims must endure. But however, we know that our humanity doesn't depend on the circumstances leading up to our conception. That your wantedness or the circumstances surrounding your conception don't change your value. You have value simply because you are a human being and all human beings have that equal right to life because we don't issue, you know, like, points on birth certificates where you're ranked higher based on your parents income you or marital status or level of education or whether or not there were candles lit when you were conceived it doesn't work that way either all humans have a right to live or none of them do but you bring up cases of rape which which sure. i mean this this law yeah. doesn't doesn't cover um you know and and, and abortions in, in those cases would be criminalized, as I understand it. Um, I mean, in the years before Roe v. Wade, a lot of women died as a result of illegal abortions that they felt they wanted and needed to get. I mean, how does the anti-abortion movement keep women sure. from resorting to unsafe options like that? Well, I think one thing we have to acknowledge is a lot of the falsehoods that are out there surrounding the years before Roe v. Wade. 1960, Planned Parenthood's own medical director, Mary Calderon, declared that 90% of all illegal abortions were being committed by physicians in good standing. So this myth of the back alley abortion isn't actually true. Mary Calderon, uh, just a few years Years later claimed that because of the invention of penicillin, the deaths uh, because of illegal abortion were under 500. The CDC, the year before Roe versus Hands Down, uh, measured de- abortion deaths, illegal abortion deaths, under 50. And while those deaths are tragic, um, th- that still doesn't justify legalizing abortion. You know, the 13th Amendment banned slavery in our nation. And while it didn't completely stop all slavery, no slavery still 
still exists in our world today, it greatly, greatly reduced it. And so that's not really, that's not an argument for why we should keep something legal that's killing over a million people a year. Well, a lot of what you brought up, I mean, has been debated over over time. We don't have time to, to get to it now. But let me just ask briefly, I mean, Brett Kavanaugh in his confirmation hearing mm -hmm. said that Roe has been reaffirmed many times over 45 years. Why are you confident this court would do that? Well, I think, you know, I think, you know, dismantling Roe and reversing Roe, it may not be in one decision and, and pro-lifers aren't certain as to how it's going to happen. The court actually just this week, though, reversed a 40 year long opinion. So I'm not worried about what the Supreme Court is going to find. I'm watchful and I'm hopeful. I think Roe is destined to become a historical footnote. Once again, another tragic period in our history in which a group of people weren't valued equally. Kristen Hawkins, thanks so much. Thanks. The Trump administration seems to be going after the Chinese telecom giant Huawei. President Trump has signed an executive order declaring a national emergency. It blocks U.S. telecom networks from using equipment from foreign suppliers that are deemed to be a national security risk. Now, this order doesn't name Huawei, but the company is believed to be the target. Elliot Zagman is a columnist for the China-focused tech news website technode.com. He's in Shenzhen, where Huawei has their headquarters. Hi, Elliot. Hi, glad to be here. Why is the United States doing this now? What's the concern about Huawei? Well, uh, if you just look at the headlines, we have Trump doubling down on the trade war last week and then going after Huawei this week. But it's a much bigger issue than just the trade war. Um, the U.S. has had an issue with Huawei uh, being, a, being a, a supplier of 5G components for quite some time now. Um, however, Huawei uh, is a first mover in 5G networks uh, all around the world, and the second half of this year is really key for that. It's when a lot of these foundations are going to be laid out. Um, so what we're, we're seeing is that the U.S. has been pushing their European allies to exclude Huawei from their 5G network, um, really with the thinking that you know, if you control the, the, the uh, telecommunications networks, it's like controlling a sea lane. So they're very concerned about uh, the Chinese uh, having control over these, these very, very crucial lanes. However, Huawei, uh, they have competitive technology and they can underbid their competitors. So a lot of carriers in Europe are not very, uh, very enthusiastic about excluding Huawei from their network. Um, and uh, so the U.S. Is, is going after them at a number of different angles. The U.S. or Huawei has a lot of deep ties to the Chinese government, and the U.S. does not trust them. And they're they're pulling out all the stops to try to prevent them from um, from from supplying the network to U.S. allies. Well, how might this executive order affect Huawei? Well, um, it's not certain for sure, but it will impact them. Certainly. Um, a source of mine at Huawei said that uh, about $11 billion last year was how much uh, Huawei spent on components from the United States. Wow. That's a very significant number. Um, I mean, Huawei's a big company. They do over $100 billion in sales this that last year. So, uh, But we don't quite know all the details, and Huawei does not know all the details of exactly how this will play out. So it is certain that, they, that it will impact Huawei. That's that's for sure. However, um, it won't be like uh, like CTE where they don't have service. the same kind of core technology. Uh, Huawei will probably still survive in one way or another. Elliot Zagman, he's a columnist for the China-focused tech news website, technode.com. Thanks, Elliot. Thank you, and happy birthday to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Ms. Zagman. This is NPR News. What can I do for you? And this is WPSU, heard in Tyrone at 91.5 and in Clearfield at 104.7. On the next Take Note, the Mueller report and what it says about Russian interference in U.S. elections and democracy. We'll talk with Laura Rosenberger, How director of the service? Alliance for Securing Democracy, about her take on the report. On the next Take Note, Friday at noon here on WPSU.
The Blair Garden Club will hold their annual plant sale tomorrow and Saturday at Jaggard First Methodist Church in Altoona. You'll find details on the community calendar at wpsu.org slash radio. Mostly sunny today, highs in the mid-60s to the north, lower 70s in central Pennsylvania. Mostly cloudy tonight, lows in the low to mid-50s. Showers likely tomorrow, though. Highs in the upper 60s to mid-70s. Chance of showers tomorrow night, lows in the upper 40s to mid-50s. And then on Saturday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Highs in the upper 60s to lower 70s. In Bradford now, 44 degrees. In Altoona, 52. 52 in State College as well. Good morning. You're listening to Morning Edition. It's 844. I'm Jeremy Hobson. In a special country music DJ session, DJ Sean Parr says Blake Shelton's God's Country gets to the core of country music. The dirt roads in the back country of Oklahoma, and he's singing about what life is really about for a lot of people it gets down to the grid. That's next time on Here and Now. Coming up this afternoon from 2 to 4 here on WPSU. Good morning, I'm David Green. A construction crew was working on a medical building in San Diego when workers heard meowing. It seemed to be coming from a 60-foot steel column that had traveled from hundreds of miles away. They tilted the column and five kittens tumbled out. The Humane Society says the stowaways will go up for adoption soon. They have been given names that pay tribute to where they came from. Piper, Crowbar, Chisel, Rebar, and Jackhammer. It's Morning Edition. Support for NPR comes from this station. And from the Skoll Foundation. Working with social entrepreneurs, innovators, and funders to accelerate solutions to the world's most pressing problems, both at home and abroad. Learn more at S-K-O-L-L dot org. From the Kresge Foundation, expanding opportunities in America's cities through grant making and social investing. More at Kresge dot org. And from listeners like you who donate to this NPR.